T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Command engine start, 2, 1. NS4 has cleared the tower. seconds here we'll hit max Q this is the point where the aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle are at its max 15,000 feet here we've hit max Q we're about to go supersonic meaning we're breaking through that sound barrier right now On the left-hand side, you can see that blue bar filling up. That's your altitude indicator. You can see we still have a long way to go to get space. Fifty thousand feet. We are still accelerating at full throttle right now. Looks like a beautiful burn on that BE3 engine. You got a nice shot right there. You don't see much of a plume with this engine, and that's because the propellants are liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. So it's actually a very clean burn. We've now passed Mach 2. 100,000 feet, about 30 seconds away from main engine cutoff, or MECO. Again, you're watching our live launch broadcast. It's the fourth flight of this new Shepard rocket. We're now at Mach 3, 150,000 feet. There we go. We've hit Miko. Main engine cutoff. Right on target. 200,000 feet and climbing. Separation should be coming up shortly. There it is, separation. Separation confirmed from both vehicles. We're just under three minutes into this launch. So now they're cruising as two individual crafts. They're gonna keep heading up towards Apogee. You can start to see the two bodies right there in your view. The crew capsule is the one to the slight right and the booster is on the left there. Jeff, at this point, if you were there in the crew capsule, you're going to start feeling that, that weightlessness. You're going to start to unbuckle, do your somersaults. Start doing somersaults. Look out that window. You can definitely see the blackness of space from there. Now, even though they're still going up, they do feel weightlessness. They're effectively in a free fall, so they can do whatever they want. If there were astronauts on board. Right now, we have those research payloads on board. Those research missions have started. They're probably getting some great data right now. You get some really clean micro G's with the trajectory of, of our new Shepard rocket. Several minutes of micro G, which really you can't get any other way unless you get up here. All right, we've hit Apogee. 331,500 feet for the Apogee. That's well over 100 kilometers over that Kármán line, over that internationally recognized line of space. Congratulations, New Shepard. You just took your fourth trip back into space for this rocket. Everything is looking great right now. At this point, that booster and the crew capsule are going to start descending. Yep, they're already on their way down. It's still a weightless environment, though. They have not really hit the atmosphere, so they can still do their experiments. We 
have about one more minute of weightlessness before that booster will start hitting the atmosphere. at 240,000 feet on its way down. You can see that speed indicator is really climbing up. It is definitely accelerating back towards the ground. So the crew capsule is also coming down and actually... Forward fins just deployed really quickly on the booster. What might be slightly counterintuitive to our audience is you actually, the PGs that you get while, while an astronaut in that crew capsule comes during descent. You're going to peak at about 5 Gs just momentarily. And very briefly. The booster is actually hitting its pierce point. It's about to re-enter the atmosphere. This is the point where it can actually start steering back to that landing pad. It's using those aft steering fins to guide its way back. You can definitely see that those wedge fins have been deployed. Again, that's adding stability to the rocket, makes it want to come down naturally. It's slowing upright. down now. You might be able to hear a sonic boom coming back as it dives back down through the sound barrier. 30,000 feet altitude. Those drag brakes should be deploying soon. There they go. You can see them. Nice and clean. Watch how it's cutting that speed. 10,000 feet, 5,000 feet, there's that engine relay. another picture-perfect landing for New Shepard rocket booster. Let's cut over to the crew capsule because it's about to deploy its parachutes. What a beautiful landing. You see that control, that hover? There we go. We've got the two drogue, drogue chutes which have deployed. That means we are executing the primary mission of today's flight, which was to test the redundancy with our parachutes. Next should be the mains. You see a little bit of oscillation there on the on the capsule, but that's to be expected. That will damp out. Yeah, that's not something to worry about. That crew capsule is about 14,000 feet right now. Again, you're watching a live launch and landing of the New Shepard vehicle. This is the fourth time that it's gone into space and landed. We're just waiting for our crew capsule to descend here. We're testing a two shoot, a one shoot out. Those main parachutes should be deploying soon, and that should help with the coning that you see, that kind of oscillation. There go the main parachutes. You can see how it's damped out nicely. Those two parachutes are inflating right now. You can see that the speed has dropped down to just 20 miles an hour. Full inflation on both of those. Beautiful. There's almost no motion with that crew capsule anymore. That's a great ride. There you see the, the hills of West Texas there in your background. If you're an astronaut coming down, you're going to see the Earth coming back at you. It's 1,000 feet off the ground. There's going to be that retro rocket system that fires just in the last second before touchdown. Keep in mind, it does kick up a lot of dust here in the West Texas desert. It looks like a hard landing, but really it just is a soft, pillowy touchdown at about one or two miles an hour. And that's coming up in about 15 seconds. We should see that happen. 10 seconds to touchdown. One hundred feet. Touchdown. 
Wow. Beautiful. Picture perfect. That's exactly what we want. Oh, that was magic. Well, Jeff, what is next for the for the capsule and the and the booster here? Both vehicles are now going through their auto safing, safing sequences. This is an autonomous procedure to make those both the booster and the capsule safe for people approaching. There are recovery teams being sent to the capsule and as well to the booster to clear up those parachutes, pack them all up, and get both vehicles back in the barn so we can just fly it again.